Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying relationships, interacting with others. In this session, we'll be looking at Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, thriving as siblings. Sibling rivalries have been blowing up homes for centuries. The Bible contains memorable stories of brothers and sisters who simply couldn't get along. Joseph irritated his older brothers, and they just decided they could do with just fine with one less brother. Jacob and Esau wrestled with one another even while being born. David's children were very busy destroying one another. When family members don't deal with conflict properly, sooner or later, damage to relationships is going to be great. One of the lessons of the Bible for si one of the lessons in the Bible for siblings today is found in the home of Mary, Martha and Mary, two sisters living with their brother Lazarus. Their story gives us a look at how God wants us to thrive amid differences. Let's read our text, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Sibling relationships that thrive know that first, confrontation avoided is conflict in the making. Martha and Mary had different ideas of what should happen when Jesus came to their home. Martha saw a big meal, an opportunity for hospitality. Mary could think of nothing but listening to Jesus teach. So Martha traded her gracious hospitality for some public and embarrassing conflict. What is missing in the Bible story is a private conversation between Martha and Mary. They could have prepared together, allowing both women to listen to the teaching. Or they could have asked Jesus what he expected of them, and maybe another option would have been presented. This was the man who fed thousands with a boy's lunch. When a conversation didn't happen, the seeds of family conflict were planted. As Martha felt the stress of doing it all, the conflict plants were being watered, fertilized, and cultivated. Imagine the anger that increased with every look toward her lazy sister. But Martha didn't address her concern to Mary. She tried to avoid confrontation by going around her to Jesus. That didn't resolve her conflict. Didn't resolve her issue at all. It made the problem worse. Backfiring on her, Jesus corrected Martha instead of reprimanding Mary. Again, verses 41 and 42. Then Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Confrontation is frightening to many people, but confrontation should be nothing more than a conversation about differences. If approached in love, it's a lot more pleasant than the growing conflict. Second, serving one another is the price of success. Few conflicts in a family are the fault of just one person. If Martha's mistake was avoiding confrontation, Mary's was putting herself first. And yet they both had a good view of the situation. Mary was correct in listening to Jesus. That kind of opportunity didn't come every day. 
Martha was correct in wanting to provide a meal for the guests. 13 hungry men don't show up every day either. <clears throat> if Mary thought of Martha's practical personality, she probably would have helped with the meal. Then both could have had some time at the feet of Jesus. I know what some of you are thinking. Maybe Lazarus could have helped get the table set. Of course, that would have been very counter to the culture of the day. When serving your brothers and sisters, instead of competing against each other, siblings that thrive learn how to compete together by serving one another. And third, knowing Jesus is the key to family success. This conflict between Martha and Mary wasn't the last time we heard from those two sisters. They suffered together when their brother Lazarus died. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, and later the family threw a banquet for Jesus and his disciples. Look at John chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. When Then six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. When they made him a there they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those who sat at the table with him. And then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Did you notice once again, Martha served while Mary worshiped and Lazarus sat at the table with the disciples? Yet the atmosphere was different. Why? Well, last time Jesus was the teacher in their home. Now he was the Lord who impacted their lives. Lazarus experienced in a very real way what it was like to be dead and be alive again because of Jesus. Martha boldly professed in John chapter 11, verse 27, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has, is to come into the world. Mary worshiped Jesus with abandon, sacrificing a very expensive oil. Nothing will promote fellowship in your home like putting Jesus at the center of your life. When each member of the family professes Jesus the way Martha did, Every sibling will be on the same page. There will be common ground. Family members learn to see the strengths of the other personalities inside the family. John gives us a great word picture in this passage. Mary's gift of perfume saturated the house. John wrote that the house was filled with the fragrance. No one could escape it. If you were allergic to perfume, you would have had to leave. Because it was oil, the scent probably stayed in the house long after Jesus left. For days, it was a constant reminder that Jesus had been there and that he had made a difference in the way they related to one another. When Jesus come, becomes the focus of your family, the difference will fill every corner of your life and will affect every relationship. Family heirlooms are often carefully handed down from generation to generation. One family treasured a very old vase. They kept it on the mantle where everyone could see it. When the mother came in from shopping one afternoon, her teenage daughter said, Mother, you know that vase that has been handed down from generation to generation? Well, this generation just dropped it. Don't be the one in your family that drops the vase of being a servant-minded brother or sister. You have a great day.